Welcome to the Terrible Podcast with your host from SteelersDepot.com, where you can find all your latest and greatest Steelers news. It's Dave Bryan and Alex Kazora, always lit, talking Steelers. And now, here's Dave and Alex. Welcome to the Terrible Podcast, Season 10, Episode 7. He's Dave Bryan. I'm Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com. Good to be back with you. Uh, Dave, camp has broken. Steelers are leaving Latrobe, but so much to talk about. A long way to go in this preseason action. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing great. It's uh, it is a happy Friday today. We have some uh, got some got to watch a little bit of football last night. Uh, got to we'll get to watch a little bit of football. Obviously, I think tonight as well too. And then the Steelers will take on the Kansas City Chiefs uh, Saturday at Heinz Field, uh, preseason game number two. And really, really am looking forward to that, especially now that we know who's starting at quarterback for sure, and a few of the other guys that we think will or won't. Uh, play a lot in that game is Lamar Jackson going to survive this season with the way he's taken off and running <laughs> like that even Aaron Rodgers told him to, to slide a little bit uh, yeah I, yeah and look, I mean he had that nice run and it, all mm-hmm. for not though that was actually called back on a blind side block uh mm-hmm. but uh you know uh, he you know look at this is a kid that can use his feet right he's got great oh. athleticism and he was able to do that at the college level but you see some of these guys, you know, and I watched a little bit of the Arizona Cardinals game as well, too. You know, a little bit of that read option is fine. Uh, you know, it's all fun and games until somebody gets the, the bejesus knocked out of them, you know. Mm-hmm. And you just wonder about some of these young mobile quarterbacks and why you haven't seen really the read option survive in the NFL is because a lot of guys are uh, faster, uh, you know, and, and, and hit a lot harder uh, at, at the college level, obviously a lot smarter as well too. So yeah, he, he, uh, he better stop taking those hits along the sidelines there. And I think Aaron Rodgers told him as much after that game. Exactly, Dave. Yeah, it's uh, all fun and games until someone gets hurt. And unfortunate segue on that note to to turn this into Steelers talk. The the news this morning not looking good for Ola Adaini, who's the star of camp. Big expectations. You know, he really carried over what he showed in in the preseason as a rookie into year two. But in now deleted photos and in, in, uh, tweets, uh, Adaini showing of, of him being post-surgery this morning for an unknown injury. Uh, the photo that he shared, which again is now deleted, I believe. Can't really tell the exact nature of it. Uh, he did have a tweet, which also has been deleted, but I was able to get a screen grab of it. And he said earlier today, so happy that I'm in an organization that shows so much support uh, from the coaches to the players, also the fans. I know I'll be back and healthy in no time which sounds positive, but we noted that he missed the finale of, of training camp practice and seems to be on track to miss some amount of time, which is obviously disappointing. Yeah, we are, we obviously don't know the nature of the injury at this point. We don't know how long he's going to be sidelined. Uh, him putting that out there is obviously – uh, uh, caught somebody's attention to told him to, to tell him to get it off of his social media accounts, which he's done. Uh, you know, we'll see. You know, is this going to be a situation that's going to linger on into the regular season? Will they need to carry? You know, will he need to start the season on IR? And remember, we went over this several weeks ago. You know, uh, you don't. He does not qualify for PUP at this point because obviously he's already practiced. So, uh, if you don't want to place him on since uh, season-ending IR, uh, and if you don't want to have to carry him on the 53-man roster. Uh, for for an extended amount of time, uh, then the only other course of action would be to place him on IR with the uh, designated to return tag. Now, obviously, he would have to miss what is it, something like six to eight six. eight eight yeah. weeks uh, if you go that route. And on top of that. He would have to be on the initial 53-man roster right after the cutdown and then the next week move to IR to qualify for uh, the designated to return thing. So you know, if you think about the eight weeks and then we're another three weeks out from the start of the season, that's 11 weeks. I'm going to, I don't even know what the injury is, but I'm going to go out on a limb and speculate that it's probably not going to be one you know, they're going to take him that long to recover from. So I guess really what we're looking at here is him going to 
maybe, and I, you know, I, like I said, we're, 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 we're speculating about something that all we have is a picture of him laying in a hospital bed on. Uh, I'm going to speculate that he'll just have to start the, the regular season as, as a you know, injured sideline player and that they won't have to move him to designated to return IR and they'll just have to, you know, maybe carry an extra outside linebacker now. And if this conversation sounds familiar, it's because it is. It's what happened last year with Ola when he suffered that hamstring injury in the preseason finale against Carolina, uh, made the roster, but then transferred to IR and uh, didn't come back until I think week 10, played nine snaps against the Chargers, and and his season was really just just ended quickly uh, because of that. So much so that Tomlin last week when asked if he felt like Adaini was a second-year player, he said he didn't didn't feel like he was because he hadn't gotten the reps uh, in large part because of the injury. So we'll wait and see. We won't hear from Tomlin until after Saturday's game uh, against the Chiefs for any sort of update on the injury front, but you just cross your fingers. It's relatively minor. Um, who stands most to gain from this? Is it Tuzar Skipper? Is it Sutton Smith opening the door for him? What do you think? Uh, Sutton Smith, it opens up the door back for him because, you know, just in an, another interview just a few days ago with Keith Butler, he stressed the importance of Ola Adeni uh, uh, being able to play special teams. In fact, in that interview, he says all of our backup linebackers have to play special teams. OK, mm-hmm. so now it's a race to see who can uh, uh, get the rose from Danny Smith. <laughs> it's not a great visual. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Danny Smith chewing bubble gum while uh, holding the rose to give out, you know. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we think, uh, you know, we think that we're going to see Sutton Smith back on the field uh, this week. Uh, and, and obviously, too, you, you would think that, I mean, could this team start the regular season with, with uh, just three healthy outside linebackers? I mean, I, they could. They did it last year, didn't they, to uh, what, start when Ola was down? Uh, did they? Bud, Watt and Chick? Was Who that, else was there? Was that it? I think that was it. They, at, at some point, they only had three. I'm pretty sure that was that was when it happened. Well, I mean, that could be the course of action again this year. So I don't think it's – I don't think it – you know, if they are willing to have just three healthy outside linebackers to start the regular season, uh, it obviously still puts someone like a uh, uh, Ulysses uh, Gilbert. You know, not that he wasn't in the picture, but uh, uh, firmly in the picture as well now too. I think though, what it does open up is 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 a potentially uh, a healthy linebacker either outside or inside that can contribute on special teams look you're not going to have Sutton Smith make your 53 man roster because you like the depth that he provides as as an outside linebacker that's just a bonus uh Mm -hmm. there god forbid you should need it you know uh so the fact is is can they get somebody who can play special teams to step up now and being as Al Sutton Smith missed that first preseason game looks like he'll play in this one boy if he can if he or Tuzar Skipper or Ulysses Gilbert can uh can uh ha- run around with their hair on fire on uh on special teams that will go a long way this weekend I think I want to take a, a, a short step back since you mentioned the Butler comments, and, and let's just assume, and we don't know anything about the long-term injury uh, that Adenier is going through right now, but let's assume that he's going to be okay by week one or very early in the season, You know, because I think Butler had this conversation before Adenier's injury. This was on Wednesday, and, and he practiced that day and then missed on Thursday. So every time that Keith Butler talks about Adenier, he talks about it within the scoop of special teams, and I get it. Special teams is critical. That's an area that, that Adani struggled in, something he's got to prove. You know, he's not a great space player, and, and I was encouraged by the job he did in, in, in the Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay game. But I, I just feel like, and I had this, this concern before, that every time they talk about him, they talk about special teams, never talking about how he can help the defense as a pass rusher when those are his best traits. So my worry, and I'll repeat it, is that let's assume that he's healthy. He's going to be stuck in that number four spot, never seeing the field defensively because they just – are, are very status quo when it comes to their pass rushers with, with Bud and Watt and Chick. You know, I, I don't, I mean, I, I think he could start, start the regular season in, in that number four role, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I, obviously you would want him to be able to progress, you know, from there. I, I guess my question is, be how, how does he even get the chance to progress? Cause if he balls out, you know, he's balled out in, in camp in the preseason game, like what does he have to do in the regular season to, to move ahead? Of Chick. 
Oh, I mean, that's a great question. I'm sure they want, you know, he, he, maybe it's his understanding of the defense, you know? Yeah. I mean, we, we you see him practice. You don't actually see, you know, the, 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 you know, the, uh, what goes on in the classroom after that in the film breakdown, mm -hmm. you know? Butler did say he's, I think he literally called him not a dumb guy, which I guess is a compliment from Keith Butler, but right. point taken. Uh, so, I mean, they're, 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 and, and with Mike Tomlin saying that he's not, you know, second year guy, which I, I found that those comments kind of, I, you know, uh, I wasn't expecting Tomlin to answer it that. I, I, no, no, I wasn't, I was, I wasn't, at, at, you know, expecting that either with him, mm -hmm. you know, in fact, I was expecting the other way. Yeah, we expect him right. to, you know, uh, so that, that was a little, I, I don't know how much you can read into the context of that, you know, but I, it did, it did catch me off guard. Mm -hmm. So, uh, look, I mean, the biggest thing right now is, is where we sit here on this Friday is he's got to get back healthy and he's got to get back uh, contributing, you know. Mm -hmm. So he's obviously going to fall behind the train some, uh, however much, uh, in, in these next few weeks on top of it here. So, you know, then, you know, depending on what the actual injury is, I mean, to rehab from that and getting himself back to the physical standpoint and all. So, <clears throat> you know, we'll see. But, I mean, I'm not so worried about the aspect that you're worried about uh, because I think sooner or later the cream rises to the top. Yeah, I just think it should happen as soon as possible, or at least him, him have that that opportunity. Um, again, that all is, is health pending. If this guy's going to miss the rest of the preseason and miss into the regular season action, then that's going to change the, the course of his season, obviously. But it just, I don't know, it, it was my concern because they I, they like Chick, and I get why they like Chick. They, they, they fully trust him. He's versatile. He can drop. He can line up off ball when they do some of the stuff they do with their mixing and matching the outside linebackers, inside linebackers, moving guys around. But... A day and he's got some real potential, but it is probably frustrating for the coaching staff because this guy so far has had problems staying healthy. And I know that there might be freak things, but you're a young guy. You don't have a lot of draft capital. You know, you got to stay on the field, be able to compete and, and, and just com be compelled this coaching staff to, to make you uh, get out on the field and play. Yeah, I'm sure the uh, narrative now will be that he's injury prone. So, yeah. You know, yeah. so. Well, let's see what this injury even is, because I have right. no idea as of right now what he's dealing with. Uh, any chance for Skipper to even make the 53 if a Danny's injury is serious enough, or do you still think? Because I think he's making the practice squad. Worst case scenario, is there any chance for anything beyond that? Oh, uh, I mean, if he can ball out on special teams, I, I and you know, make no mistake, I know people think, man, Dave, you sure do talk about special teams a lot. But let's face it, Alex, the bottom, of, I mean, that's the way these bottom of the end guy, roster guys are going to have to make it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, is, is Tuzar Skipper probably might be the, the more accomplished NFL pass rusher between him and a guy like Sutton Smith right now? Well, we haven't even seen Sutton Smith on the field yet. But, mm -hmm. I mean, we have seen Tuzar Skipper do some nice things and going to probably hopefully get a nice chance to do it against tougher competition uh, this coming weekend. Uh, hopefully we'll see Sutton Smith. And, look, I mean, the whole thing going all the way back to when Sutton Smith was drafted was the fact that, look, he you know, has some nice tape as a pass rusher, uh, has, has you would think has the character and the mentality to be a, a, a hugely valuable special teams player. So that's what we're looking for. So, uh, you know, I it, to me it's not a question about their outside linebacking skills as it is their special teams skills at this point. Sure. No, I agree. And, and Sutton Smith should profile as the much better special teamer than Tuzar Skipper, who's pretty stiff. And, and again, like Ola, isn't a great space player, but better pass rusher than he's going to offer you going backwards or, or playing on special teams. All right. Uh, we'll keep you posted. Hey, hey may, maybe this too, you know, maybe the releasing uh, the other thing too. And we talked about this uh, on, on the special edition podcast last night uh, about the roster move, about, uh, 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 Kuntz uh, was one of the players signed an outside linebacker uh, out of uh, Duquesne. Uh, he was one of the players. Uh, who was the other one? Uh, Mickey Crum. Yeah, Mickey Crum out of Louisville tight end. Uh, the thing with Kuntz is he's more in the mold of a Sutton Smith. <laughs> you, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's like a, 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 
I don't know, is there a poor man Sutton Smith? I guess if there is, I mean, I looked briefly at his, uh, I mean, he put up some nice sack numbers and all, you know, at, at, uh, at, at, at Duquesne and all, and, and, and I didn't get deep into sack study or anything on him. But, I mean, he's an athletic, more of an athletic guy that can get down the field. So, and JT Jones, the outside linebacker, was not waived injured according to the uh, NFL transaction report. So, why would you just swap out linebackers there unless you thought maybe JT Jones really gives you nothing? I mean, what, there was absolutely no way that JT Jones was going to make the roster or even a practice squad. So, you're doing him the favor and you wanted to get a kind of a special teams guy to come in and, 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 and help in that area because you knew what was going on with all of there. So, uh, I don't really know, but uh, I do know that Tuzar Skipper and Sutton Smith are the two that you would think uh, that are battling along with uh, Ulysses Gilbert for a night a ninth uh, outside line, but well, really, technically, linebacker, I, yeah. uh, a ninth or tenth linebacker spot if you keep Ola uh, potentially on the active roster, right? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I haven't done, well, Maybe. I mean, you could have nine with Ola and him maybe be the inactive. Because you're not going to have nine linebackers active on game day, even if they were all healthy. So, you know, Ola just might be the default guy that's going to be inactive on game day. Right. If, if we get that far. I don't want to put the cart before the horse here because we'll see. We'll keep you posted. I'm not sure. But I do know that Skipper, Smith, and Gilbert, they're going to play a lot on Saturday. And I'm really excited to check them out. Yeah, absolutely. They should. And we'll see how much uh, Watt and Dupree plays. And, uh, I mean, obviously inside you want to get a lot, another good look at, at Devin Bush and probably some of Mark Barron. Uh, we don't think <clears> – <throat> we don't <clears> – <throat> excuse me. Uh, we don't think Vince Williams is going to play. Uh, we you think- may jump in here, Dave. Let's clear your Yeah, I'm, str- I'm struggling. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting with Sutton Smith because I, I expect him to play because he was able to get in that team practice uh, on Thursday, the finale, but he's missed a lot of time. I mean, you know, that, that practice was in, in, in shell. I'm not sure when the last padded practice he's been in, it's been full contact was. So, you know, we'll see what the effects of him missing probably at least a week of actual practice uh, is, is going to be and in, in, in how that's going to hinder him. But hopefully he'll play and get some snaps and just get his feet wet so he can buy that third game a little bit, maybe in the fourth quarter of that third game, and then certainly in the finale, just be able to get a, a better, cleaner evaluation of him. Yeah, we'll see. All right, Dave, uh, we'll keep you updated, like I said, on a, a day and just hope for, for some good news there. Hopefully it's going to be a two-, three-week thing and, you know, decent chance he misses the rest of the preseason, but hopefully he can be ready for the start of regular season action. Mike Tomlin held his press conference on Thursday, uh, as he usually does this time of year, and previewing the game, but also just previewing just the team in general. Said, I think, a lot of what we expected. Mason Rudolph will start. Uh, Josh Dobbs will play, and they hope to get Devlin Hodges some playing time. They should get Hodges, like I said, about a quarter, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, depending on game circumstance. But what all jumped out from Tomlin's presser to you, Dave? Uh, well, I thought first and foremost his comments when asked about Deontay Johnson, if he's seen enough from him. Uh, yet, you know, and yeah, I, I don't know why anyone even asked that question. Like, how could, no, of course he hasn't seen enough. The guy hasn't played like, you know, <laughs> it just seemed like an easy, right. It was an easy, easy answer, answer, but I thought how he answered it, you know, okay. uh, sure. with, 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 with the aspect of, uh, you know, he, he just had, you know, has it done? No, he hasn't done enough. I mean, I think that was Jerry Dulac. I, I'm trying to find a full context here, uh, of it so I can read it off here. And, you know, Ben kind of said the same thing later in the day. Uh, have you seen enough of Deontay Johnson to get a feel what, for what he can do? No. And then the uh, follow-up question, he needs to be out there more, question mark. Uh, and Thomas says, and he was yesterday and he will be today. A lot of young guys battling nag- nagging injuries. It slows their growth and development, and it slows us to get an opportunity to get to know him, but not anything unusual about that. And Ben later on in the day said something along the lines or early in Today, I think it was after practice. It went on, went along the line and said, "Look, you know these uh, these young players, you know they they they, they go through their 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 uh, year of uh, you know their their college season. 
They immediately jump out. They jump into the pre-draft process of training for the combine, uh, training or you know get, getting ready for the draft, and then they're drafted and boom, they're they're in an NFL uh, training camp. And a lot of them just you know in so many words he was getting that they they're just not physically ready for it and that's why you see some of them hit the hit the rookie wall if you will so uh <laughs> look this kid's not going to be the starter week one and he wasn't going to be the starter week one even if he had stayed healthy through this process uh and it's time people start accepting that fact uh there's that there's not any kind of a uh smite against him look we both love the kid but the fact of the matter is to expect a rookie wide receiver to come in in this offense and contribute heavily right away as you know sites like pro football focus wanted you to believe it just wasn't going to happen uh, especially when you have a veteran there like Dante Moncrief you obviously you have Juju you have a second year player going to play a lot of the Z uh, receiver position in James Washington it just wasn't going to happen and now if you really think that you're going to get a lot of pro- offensive production or a lot of offensive snaps out of Deontay Johnson in the first couple weeks you're really fooling yourself I think uh, when it comes to that aspect of it. Now, can he get on the field, you know, in the first quarter of the season and slowly start getting that that uh, that snap count up? I think so, but I just I think it's uh, I think it's asking a little bit much uh, for for Deontay Johnson to be. And look, he might even be inactive. And we we talked about this last mm-hmm. night. You know, don't be surprised. And I'm just throwing it out there. Don't be surprised if he's a week one inactive, uh, uh, and especially if the, the Steelers keep six total receivers. And and there was a comment on a recent podcast. I thought it was a fair criticism um, that we were – we still are, but especially right after Deontay Johnson got drafted, pretty high on the prospects of him potentially having an impact right away just based on the skill set. And I thought that he was a more – and I still believe this – a more advanced college receiver than, say, James Washington or a lot of receivers that come out in a spread system. They don't have to face press coverage and haven't played the X receiver and haven't moved around a lot like Johnson did at Toledo. But once we got – Especially at the start of OTAs when he missed some time, and then especially once we got once we got in the rookie mini camp, saw some more from Moncrief and saw Johnson struggle with some injuries and 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 be a little behind the eight ball. I think that's whenever we kind of changed our tune of okay, we know how important this training camp, this this process is for for anybody, especially rookies. And the fact that Johnson has missed so much time is going to really hinder his growth and development the way that Tomlin talked about. So I think it, I think we were fair in saying that. You know, whenever he got drafted, it, best case scenario, if this guy's healthy and plays a lot right away and, and plays to the level we think he, he can hit, then he may make an impact. But now realizing that he's missed a lot of time and that he's, you know, development has been slowed, it's really going to curtail his rookie season. So I just want to clarify, I thought, the comment uh, from that. I, I still have, you know, a lot of hope and excitement about Deontay Johnson, but, but I agree with you is that you haven't seen enough from him. Of course, he hasn't even been in a stadium yet. He will play against the Chiefs, and that's really important. But, um, you know, he's certainly been behind the eight ball with some of these smaller injuries that have caused him to miss, I don't even know, it was probably four or five practices and then uh, obviously Friday's game. Look, I mean, the uh, the the thing with him uh, – okay, I'm reading that comment now. Now I'll try to feel a touch of revision with Deontay Johnson. You guys are really high – uh, a point where you're saying, saying, implying he he would have Moncrief's job sooner rather than later. Well, yeah, I mean that's that's obviously the hope, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I but... mean, I, uh, you guys say that Mon- uh, how how you guys were writing Moncrief off. I don't think we were writing Moncrief off. Just saying that the fact that you know uh, that it was more of a this guy is going to come in, and you hope that sooner rather than later that he can supplant the guy that you that you hired. Because remember, you 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 signed Moncrief before the draft because you had to because you don't know what you're going to get in the draft. Mm-hmm. Right. So what's this guy saying? I, I, well, I mean, so you, you're reading the comment. It was just just saying that you know we were pretty high on Deontay Johnson, talking about his potential role and what he could do year one. And then you know we said that I said that that he could take snaps way early in the year. But now that we've learned more about Deontay Johnson or really haven't learned more about him because of the injuries holding him back and Moncrief has played well and showed, showed a good chemistry with Ben, that's unlikely to happen. So I think we were just changing as the information changes. We realized that Johnson was losing some reps and, you know, was having a, a decent camp and not a great camp and then, you know, missed a lot of time. 
Look, I mean, the, 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 the fact of the matter is to, to expect uh, uh, him to come in and, and be the start. I don't see at what point either one of us thought that this guy was going to play a uh, huge amount of snaps right from the get-go. Could he get on the field 10, 12, 13 snaps like a James Washington did last year uh, uh, prior to all the, you know, coming out of the draft? Yeah, there, there was a possibility of that happening, but there's a less, even less of that possibility of that happening now I mean but we're still talking about here can can he get uh can he can he get Moncrief's job sooner rather than later uh well yeah that was the initial thought I mean what but what was the sooner you know I'm talking first half of the season uh uh being the sooner rather than the later now will he grab Moncrief's job uh by the first half of the season he better get busy I mean we haven't Mm -hmm. even seen him play a preseason game yet I mean, uh, the the kid is talented, you know. So I don't mm-hmm. know where we're being revisionist of history here. Do you? No, and that's what I'm. That's the point I was just trying to make. Is our thoughts changed as his playing time was was limited? And 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 I I, I said at one point that yeah maybe by if all goes well, best case scenario, the Johnson could play. You know, could really start siphoning snaps by maybe the first month into the season by week four, week five. But I've come off of that just simply because Johnson has missed so much time. I mean, I thought all along, you know, from the moment he was drafted, there was a chance you could get him on the field for eight, ten snaps a game, you know. Mm-hmm. But now, I'm, uh, because of what he's missed, I'm less, you know, I, I'm less convinced that can happen now. Yep. But I mean, yep. you you did not spend. Uh, you, I mean, look, they're going to get him on the field if he's healthy. This is to me, this is not going to be a Martavis Bryant situation where you're in week eight or week nine, and he and he and he's you know, uh, still on the inactive list. You know, you mm-hmm. go back to Martavis Bryant, his rookie year was like week nine or 10 or whatever before he even saw the field for the first time. I don't think that's going to be the case with him, with, with, with Deontay. Uh, but I, I, you know, the, the expectations, especially with the way uh, training camp has gone and preseason has gone for him, uh, surely need uh, to be uh, to, to, to be peeled back. But I do agree that he could be battling just to try to get a hat on game day out of the gate. I mean, maybe sure. Maybe different now, by week, eight, week nine. But let's assume that they just keep the traditional conventional six of Eli and Switzer being the final two. Switzer's always going to be active because he's going to be your return guy. Uh, so, And you're probably not going to be able to keep all six. I mean, I tried to do the math in my roster prediction, and I couldn't keep all six active. So it came down to Eli and, and Deontay fighting two dogs, one bone, and obviously Eli – more veteran presence, uh, probably is going to get the hat ahead of Deontay Johnson initially. And once, and look, and, and uh, the thing that we keep going back, we've had the argument about Switzer and not really argument, uh, discussion about uh, Rodgers and, and Switzer. You know, what's going to happen? You know, uh, keep your fingers crossed that uh, let's say you do keep all six and, and, and Rodgers and Switzer are part of that six and Deontay's obviously part of that six. You know, the, the whole six that everybody's talking about right now. What happens, let's say you do start Deontay Johnson off. He's got to be inactive the first week or two, uh, you know, to, to get him back. You know, where you're comfortable with him in football shape and you know who he is and can have a, a cutout part of the game for him. Uh, are you still going to keep? Are you going to still give hats to all six wide receivers, especially if Johnson is not going to be a special teams contributor? You know the question. The answer to that's probably no. So who 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 do you sit? Yeah, it's it, it certainly could be a Deontay Johnson sit. Right, and but I mean you're not going to want to sit him long. I mean, no. No, but I'm just thinking out of the out of the gate. So what happens once he starts dressing? Who sits? I mean, we'll we'll deal with that whenever we deal with it. Uh, injuries can can change that. Play is going to change that. I we'll, we'll we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. All right. Uh, what? Where, where, how do we get down that rabbit hole? Uh, how do we get down any of the rabbit holes that we do on this show? Uh, I'll, 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 I'll take blame for it. Uh, how will Mike Tomlin handle the kicking duties? Uh, this week, he has every intention of doing what he did last week. Uh, you know, continue to watch that. Have a couple more days of work. We'll challenge them in some of these settings and, and outcomes of those settings might dictate otherwise. In other words, uh, if something pops up during the game Saturday night and we think we can put in uh, Chris Boswell or Jordan Berry in a in a super high pressure situation, we don't care who's up. Uh, we're going to throw them in there. That's I think that's basically what Tomlin told us. Uh, uh, you know, the, the other day during his press conference there, and 
to uh, to, speaking of kickers and punters, uh, Boswell's had a great camp, has he not? Yeah, 27 to 29 for Boswell, uh, based off of my charting uh, this camp. No, I didn't chart on the second day of camp uh, when they kicked, um, so I don't have the numbers for that. I did have the Boswell did well. So just based off of the, I think, four or five days, I do have uh, kicking numbers, 27 to 29. That's 93%, and you compare that to Matthew Wright, who was 21 or 27. So pretty noticeable difference there. So good stuff. So far, so good for Chris Boswell. Boy, I'd like to see him come out uh, at Hinesfield and a drill of 50 right down the middle, you know? Eh, it'd be nice. We'll uh, see if he gets the chance. He's yeah. got to get the opportunity first, obviously, just set up right. And your thoughts on the punting situation with Berryman, I guess. Nice leg, just don't know where it's going, right? Yeah, some issues with, with direction and placement. It's the same stuff I've said every time. And, you know, obviously, when you get a longer look at him, I mean, he had – how many punts did he have against the Bucks? Uh, did he have just what, one, right? Just, just the one. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't even think of any, anything coming to mind right and, now. And so Barry, Barry had two for like an average of like forty four point five or something along mm-hmm. those lines. And yeah, Barry made had that one that booted in the end zone. Sixty four yard bunt, but a forty four or forty six yard net, I think. Right. It was. Right. So, so we'll, we'll see. I still think I think Barry's got a really good chance to win it um, just because of the, what the, what this team values. But, you know, one game could, could obviously change that conversation a little bit. Uh, Mike Tomlin was asked about where is Cameron Sutton improved the most? He says detail and increased versatility. He has always been a detail guy. He's always been versatile, but I've seen an upswing in both. Uh, boy, that's a, that's about as positive as a comment that you can get from uh, uh, out of Mike Tomlin. I think those are positive attri- attributes to his resume when he came in out of Tennessee and as he gets into his career has proven to be legitimate and real. The only, thing, the only other uh, superlative we needed there was spectacular, but <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, some uh, yeah, I mean that that's what you're seeing out of Cameron Sutton, right? Yeah, a really good camp from him. And while he won't be a starting outside corner or nickel corner, those spots are pretty locked up. He's going to be the dime guy this year, and I think that goes back to my idea that they're going to cut back on their dime use a little bit now that they have some real influx of talent inside linebacker. They can not they don't have to run dime on first and ten and second and eight and along the goal line now. Uh, and they can use it on just obvious pass situations, two minute, uh, no huddle kind of stuff. So like third and five plus, and then you know end the game and the half stuff. So Sutton's going to have a real role this year. And then injury strikes, you know that could certainly elevate him. But a really good camp from him. Not only just the ball skills and making plays on the football, tied with Steven Nelson for the team leading interceptions, but the run defense was also equally impressive to me. And I wrote about this, and I don't know, if maybe this is me just trying to connect dots that aren't even there, but. The Steelers love their their big running backs, and every single running back that they had in camp was 5'10", 215 plus. And the one benefit you get in, in terms of your, your secondary is your secondary learns how to tackle 5'10", 215 plus. There's no 180 pound guy that they're taking down. So Cam Sutton, you know, had to take on Benny Snell. He had to take on a guy like Ralph Webb before he got hurt, or Malik Williams. So you learn how to take down those bigger backs. I think it helps indirectly your secondary become better tacklers. And Sutton, I think, has become a better tackler. Uh, Mike Thomas said they anticipate using more starters than last week. Uh, he would not say exactly what, you know, what that means and who those people were. I think we could quickly give uh, our listeners uh, a short, what we would call a preseason inactive list, even though there's no such thing as a preseason inactive list. But Ben Roethlisberger, Marquise Pouncey, David DeCastro, obviously Ola Daney now, uh, uh, Joe Hayden, Vince Williams, that's six. Uh, help me out here. Who else is not going to play? Uh, most of the offensive line. Did you mention them? Well, uh, I already got uh, DeCastro and, Foster. and, and Pouncey. Pro- probably Foster's not going to play. Uh, yeah. We'll see. Did if, you mention Juju? Uh, Juju. I mean, do you want to get him out there, any? No, not till the third game. What about James Conner? I wouldn't play him till the third game. What about Vance McDonald? I wouldn't play him because I wouldn't <laughs> <laughs> put him in a bubble and roll him around the field. All right, so we're already up around 10, 11 guys just on offense. Are you going to throw Cam Hayward out there? I wouldn't play Cam till the third game. What Tua, about? I think Tua will play this week. All right, to it maybe. Uh, what about uh, either one of your outside linebackers, Wider Dupree? I'd probably play them both, series or two. 
All right, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Sean Davis, you would like to get some snaps yeah. with him and Edmonds. He should play. He definitely should uh, play. Together, especially with Nelson in the secondary there. Uh, Nelson should play. Yeah, right? Nelson should play. Uh, who's going to start opposite Nelson? <laughs> Artie. Artie, huh? Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%, huh? 100%. No, no, no Cam Sutton, huh? No Cam Sutton to be already right, back. So I was, right. so Sutton, maybe, well, Hilton will probably start. So, yeah, it, yeah Sutton will, will rotate in. And obviously, and I don't know why at this point, it looks like I guess Javon Hargrave's going to play. Uh, oh, play into the third quarter for some <laughs> Yeah, some ungodly just get reason. it. Look, he was, he was throwing furniture around. <laughs> uh, you don't want him to hurt his back throwing pieces of furniture around. Yeah. You know, so uh, uh, we'll have to see what happens there. Yeah. No update on, on contract talks with him. I guess it gets pretty quiet in the middle of camp, but nothing new on that front. We, we should start hearing something on some of these guys soon. Yeah, because we're getting – pretty close we're two weeks out from a deadline basically right yeah i mean post team deadline yeah, yeah by, by the start season. of the regular season so we uh look i think it's gonna be after the third preseason game yeah and then did it with hayden too because then 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 you have uh then you have the extra week and a half or whatever to to, to get stuff done there so i think that's i'm not surprised that we're sitting here with camp camp uh, ending and not having a deal. I think I've said as, mm. uh, ex- expected as much when it comes to that. You know, people saw that, that to it restructure and says, oh, here comes a move. And I said, no, no, no. You know, they're just, they're just get, getting ready there. And look, they have $5 million, almost $5 million in cap space. That's what they'll want to have going into the season. So, you know, will they do anything at this point? We'll, we'll see. I mean, we fully expect them at least to get Hayden done. And we'll see if they get the uh, hard grape done. But I would think that those are going to be your only two moving forward. Yeah, those would be uh, at best the only two. Um, the one interesting thing that Tomlin said that stuck out really above everything else, and I forget if this was on Tuesday or Thursday. Maybe you can jog, jog my memory here. But how about Tomlin pulling out the Devin Bush Ryan Shazier comparison, talking about how Bush's preseason debut against the Bucks was pretty similar to Shea's years, which was I forget against who that was. It doesn't it was, really matter. Well, it was a whole it was a Giants. home debut he was talking about. It was uh, oh. he was comparing Bush's debut last week to Shea's years home preseason debut back in what 2014. Yeah. Well, still either way, it's a comparison on. Uh, uh, unprovoked uh, to to offer that he was asked about Devin Bush, but but Tomlin brought up Shays here, and for Tomlin to to do that, talk about compliments. That's a that's a big one. I think Tomlin is super excited about Devin Bush, and and is going to play him every opportunity he gets. Yeah, I mean, look, and then and I thought right from the get go that there was a good chance that uh, you know that 2014 year was uh, what was it 2014? I thought that was Shays year's rookie uh, season. To me question myself let me look uh but yeah big it was a lofty comparison they uh, uh, yeah, they, op- yep, yeah they opened up on a road against the giants in preseason that year so oh. and in that game that was uh, the tree archer with the long run the lone play he made in his career remember that one was that, i remembering was that that, that, that one? now i'm making myself look it up again he had a long catch and run against the giants we all thought oh great pick nope that was that burned out pretty quickly. Yeah, he had a uh, 46 yeah. yarder in there. Yeah. Well, and uh, let's see, what did uh, Shazier have in that game? It was a good debut. I don't remember the particulars of it, but yeah, just to see him drop that comparison is is pretty heavy coming from Tom. You know what? I don't think even Shazier played in that game. In no? that in that in that Giants game. So I think just his debut in general was. No was uh against the bills in 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 week two so uh anyway daniel has a nice post up that showing some uh some comparison gifts and how mike tomlin was right to do so i don't know if you looked at that yet uh uh but that went up uh late last night as well too there so make sure if you're listening to this podcast to check that out so i i wasn't i mean it it is positive look i mean if you want to make a comparison by, by that that's fine well we've already seen devin bush in that one game do some things that I guess you could call it Shazier like, right? Oh, sure. I mean, I get why, you know, the comparison is there, but I thought that was going to be more reserved for you and I to talk about and not because you just don't hear that stuff from Tomlin very often, mm-hmm. you know, to have that kind of praise from a rookie. So, yeah, that. And then when Tomlin was talking to Michael Irvin on NFL Network saying, you know, we didn't 
move up for Devin Bush to watch to to have him watch. I mean that just that 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 in conjunction with what Tomlin said and then Bush is obviously owns really impressive play just tells me this guy's gonna play a lot in 2019 <laughs> he gonna play at least 90 percent in week one snaps didn't he well I, I still pull back on that just a little bit because of the concern about playing in foxborough against tom brady but he's gonna play a lot in week one and then by then by week two they might be yeah full, full go and the odds of him winning the uh, Defensive Rookie of the Year award are starting to come down quite a bit. In fact, on a couple of sites, he's the uh, uh, he's the leader in the clubhouse, if you will, as being the favorite to win it. And you know, if and I've said that if he can get on the field week one, you know, you got to you got to throw him in there with all the other rookies, defensive rookies, uh, as, as, you know, that'll start week one. I think the biggest question of why the odds are on him were were a little bit longer to start with, and believe it or not, I think they're like, weren't they like uh, uh, plus twelve hundred or plus eighteen hundred uh, right out of the shoot with him? Because people just didn't didn't know you know how quickly he's going to get on the field. I mean, you look back at last year with Darius Leonard, you know, for a guy for a kid to win the defensive rookie of the year award, they got to get on the field quickly, and especially mm-hmm. uh, a guy that that you're going to be uh, uh, you know, you're not talking about a guy that's going to probably intercept a lot of passes and get a lot of turnovers. So uh, it's going to have to be the tackle stats and the, and the sacks and the, and the tackles for losses. And you just gotta really, you know, stockpile those things. And Darius Leonard, of course, had what did he have last year? Like 160 or something? Yeah, 140. I mean, uh, and apparently on a on a bad ankle, he said he ain't hurt hurt his ankle yeah. in like week two and played amazing. Still. Now, now will Bush hit those kind of numbers? <laughs> God, I mean, uh, hope not. I mean, can dream. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, he's really good. Uh, uh, you know, I would think that a defensive line would do a little bit better job. Maybe some of that take yeah, take take, take some of that away or whatnot. But you know, I think there's a if he is out on that field week one, if he does stay healthy for all 16 games, yeah. I mean, uh, I, if, I hope you you know, pop, pop, plop down maybe a couple couple units on that plus 1200. You know, a couple weeks ago. But anyway, uh, this guy's gonna play right out of the shoot if he's healthy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. No question about that. And, and credit to his conditioning, too. Steelers have done a really good job with the first-round picks, finding guys that not only are talented, but are in excellent shape. Edmonds, Watt, Bush only missed the one practice you know, on, on Wednesday, and that was very minor, and he was back the next day. So they're finding guys that not only have the talent to play right away, but the conditioning and the work ethic to play right away, too, which is just as important for a rookie. Absolutely, and boy, this will make, you know, how the narrative was for a while. The Steelers don't ever play their defensive rookies or their rookies or whatnot. Well, that, you know, I think even uh, Greg Rosenthal from NFL.com tried to throw that out recent, throw throw her out there recently. You know, when you look at these first rounders, I mean, look at that. Obviously, Edmonds' situation was kind of forced upon him because of the injury last year to Morgan Burnett, but it happened, Okay. I mean, he, and he was still going to play a lot of snaps, even sure. if things went according to plan. Still going to be the dime guy and play four hundred, five hundred snaps. Right, you know, and, and uh, you know, you kind of can relate maybe that to maybe a Deontay Johnson this year. You know, he's still going to play a lot of snaps by the time the dust settles. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. just uh, uh, now will he be forced into it? You know, uh, more by injury. Well, I mean, we'll see. But uh, uh, I mean, Edmonds played the second most total defensive snaps on the team behind Sean Davis last year. Uh, and you know, Keith Butler talked about that just a few days ago too, saying you know that wasn't necessarily a bad thing you know for him to do. And and because of him doing that, uh, he should be further along. And in other words, you know, we're expecting a big jump by uh, Terrell Edmonds this year. Expecting him to be a lot more versatile this year and then you know, obviously you go back the year before that with tj watt you know starting right out of shoot <clears throat> playing a large what are you playing 15 of 16 games that year i think a hamstring or something got him uh for uh for for one of those weeks and then you know keep keep going back uh you know, really all really i guess back to what ryan shazier and uh mm-hmm. you know and here they have a good good uh, nice brief history here of getting these first round guys on the field you know, not only a lot, but right away. Yep, that, that's basically changed since it was sitting behind Cam Thomas, and after that, this team finally made a move. So anyone who talks about how this team doesn't play the rookies is 
looking at uh, stuff from, from too long ago. Uh, last thing from Tomlin that stuck out to me, asked about the tight end group, and I think it was Jeremy Fowler that asked about, you know, you traded for Vance McDonald in 2017 when your tight end group wasn't uh, where you wanted it to be. How do you view the tight end group today? And Tomlin said, quote, we're still evaluating it. You know, uh, the in-stadium action is the biggest key. We've been in one stadium, and I'm excited about watching them and others taking significant steps. we still got time, and we look forward to those guys meeting the standard of expectation. Unfortunately, probably not going to get your second in-stadium look at guys like Zach Gentry and Christian Scotland Williamson this Saturday versus the Chiefs. So that's a position that's still very much up in the air, and it is possible, as we talked about on the last special edition of the podcast yesterday, Dave, that they could add to uh, later in the preseason. Yeah, absolutely they could. Uh, we'll, we, we, we constantly get asked on uh, you know, on, on uh, some few, few of the emails throughout the last several weeks is what you know what position are they most likely to add and we've said all along tight end or safety right and the thing is history tells us that there's an ad coming uh, at least one we just don't know who it is who and and what position but if you're a betting person still at this point you would say tight end and then possibly safety so we still got three weeks to go here heck it could be a kicker for all we know you know uh Mm -hmm. uh or punter even so you will have have to uh keep keep monitoring that but if you were betting on it right now you'd say either a tight end or safety and it would be quite a uh it'd be be quite a surprise if they didn't because of the long history that they have of, of adding at least one uh from uh, what was the point started really 2015 uh, yeah, well, yeah started training camp on you know mm-hmm. all right dave anything else from tomlin or you want to move on uh yeah we can move on you know just one one final thing about keith mm-hmm. butler you know talking about the versatility in the secondary and how you know, he talked about steven nelson and and how they expect him to to be able to play some inside you know, at some point, so they're they're you know, it's not a shock you you would expect them to. In today's NFL, the more versatile a team uh, or the more versatile players that uh, a team can have, obviously, the better. The Steelers are no different. The Steelers have preached versatility forever, you know, and and, and then some. But you know, they're really making a concerted effort to hopefully have a very versatile defense this year, and especially when it comes to, you know, their defensive backs, you know, being able to move these guys around, not have them play specific sides. Uh, we heard even uh, uh, Hayden earlier, you know, several weeks ago, talking about that when they play the Browns, he expects to follow OBJ around, you know. So are we going to are we gonna see on a week-to-week basis uh, Hayden traveling a lot. Uh, I think it's possible. And, you know, uh, Butler talked about the whole post safety thing and how, you know, against teams like the Patriots and Tom Brady, you don't want to have a, if, if, if a team like that with a great quarterback can find a certain person on, on your defense and pigeonhole them was the exact term that he used then. That's usually when they, when they go after and attack those kind of guys. So, you know, it's not surprising that Keith Butler is saying you know that they want this uh, want this defense to be a, a lot more versatile, especially when it comes to their their, their defensive backs. Uh, now the hope is, can, can they carry through it, and will we see the most versatility that we've ever seen, uh, so, uh, at least in the in in the uh, Keith Butler defensive uh, coordinator era? I'm not sure about that whole era, possibly, but I know they'll be a lot more versatile than last year, and that's all I really care about. And you have people who adapt and be able to play matchups and, like you said, not get stuck in these situations where the offense knows how you're going to respond as a defense and there's nothing you can do about it that got this team into too much trouble last year. So whether that's being able to move Nelson inside if you want to shadow a guy with Nelson or if Hayden moves and that's going to naturally move the rest of your guys and if they're flexible enough to move, it's like a receiver. You know, if, you, if you're move, you moving and Tony Brown in the slot, then your slot guys better be able to play on the outside. You know, it's the same idea for the corner. Moving your corner to the slot, that guy better be able to play outside or however you, you, you lay it out. So I think it is going to be a lot more flexible group, a lot more versatile group, only because of the players they brought in like a Steven Nelson but also just the experience of the group where you have Terrell Edmonds going into his second year Sean Davis his second year at free safety Cam Sutton's versatility um and, and all that so yeah it'll be a lot better than it was last year all right uh I think I think we've covered a a, a big swath if you will of uh what all has been said the last couple of days 
Let's jump back to camp because uh, I know you asked me yesterday about a lot of winners and losers, and I didn't have a great idea because I was still just trying to, to work through it myself. So today I posted a, a list of winners and losers uh, from training camp, and there's other names I could have put on there. I didn't want to make it a super long list one way or the other. But uh, just to run down kind of through some of the big winners here, I'll just go through it briefly. Devlin Hodge is a good quarterback, just being a number four, vaulting himself into this conversation like we've basically never seen from a true number four quarterback before. So hats off to him. Juju, I just wanted to note that Juju had a really good camp, and, and that's expected at this point. It's pretty obvious, but I did want to note it anyway. Uh, Zach Banner, Fred Johnson, for, for really stating cases to make uh, the 53. Uh, both guys have been impressive. Isaiah Bugs to, to really be an impressive rookie at the back end of this thing. Uh, with his hand use and how well he played against Tampa Bay. Uh, the outside linebackers, Adaini, who obviously now with the injuries a little up in the air, but still a great camp from him. And who's our skipper, former or fellow Toledo Rocket, uh, playing well, really good case for the practice squad. Devin Bush, because he's going to play a lot this year. He's proven that. He's taken the theoretical traits that got him drafted, and now he's translated that to the practice field and inside a stadium. Uh, Gilbert the third for playing well, and again, right now has a, a clear edge over Sutton Smith, Cam Sutton. Best camp he's ever had. Artie Burns locked into this team pretty much right now. Terrell Edmonds for definitely looking like he's going to take that jump year one to year two. Cam Kelly for probably being the backup free safety and someone that that carried over that spring buzz into the summer. And then Chris Boswell for going 27 to 29 on kicks. Um, he's in the driver's seat right now. Uh, okay, what else stuck out to you? Uh, you know, from 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 training camp. Well, I'll just go to the losers now, and I'll just kind of run through that list briefly, too. Again, it's a lot of the names we've talked about throughout camp and a little bit on yesterday's podcast. But Chuck Wilmacore for I just thought that right tackle battle between him and Matt Filer was going to be a lot more competitive than it turned out to be. And Filer's pretty much got this thing locked up right now. Corfor will still have value. He'll be the backup swing tackle. He'll play as a six offensive lineman, which I think is better for him to do that than, than say, Matt Filer. But I uh, didn't give Filer the push I thought that he would. Gerald Hawkins been a little bit better the last couple of days, but I think Banner's over him right now, and Hawkins has got to really try to work his way back into the conversation. LeVon Hooks, uh, everybody's friend, <laughs> LeVon Hooks. You know, he's a guy that's hung around. Uh, kudos to him for doing that. Has a lot of staying power, but it's never gotten over that hump. He's not going to make the 53. Bugs has clearly cemented his spot over Hooks, and I think even practice squad at this point is going to be tough for him. I like Henry Mondo. Offers a little bit more as a pass rusher. Sutton Smith are falling behind with that injury. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a tough one for him. And then maybe one of the biggest losers of all, Marcus Allen, from going from a guy that I thought was going to be this team's dimebacker this year. Tomlin seemed to imply it after the draft, and now a very real chance of not making this team at all, running third team right now, and that's a really poor place for him. This this uh, Marcus Allen could be a practice squad guy. Yeah, I know they did with Brian Allen last year, so I guess there is some history, but I still think it's pretty rare for this team to have a guy, a draft pick, make the team one year and then not make the 53 the next year, but then they still keep him on the practice squad. Like, he's either in or out is kind of how I look at it, but I, I maybe. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely see on that. Uh, one other thing I wanted to talk about uh uh, I think we forgot talking about what Tomlin said. You know, he was asked about if Mason and and maybe you can answer this as, as part of uh, part of your camp observations as well too. Uh, have you seen Mason Rudolph's aggression? Uh, yeah, and I, I, and I assume that's being more of the taking the shot. I think it was phased uh, uh, phrased more about him taking being more aggressive, taking shots down the field. Well, I don't think he's taken a ton of shots downfield. It's something I've talked about with him throughout camp that I wanted to see him take more risks and, and calculate a risks and be more aggressive downfield. I know Rudolph talked about that, said, you know, the defense had done a good job of kind of forcing him to throw short. The one thing I like about Rudolph with his aggression is that while he maybe wasn't throwing it as deep 40 yards plus the way that Josh Dobbs or Devlin Hodges was, he was trying to make some really tough throws in the tight windows on those short and intermediate routes where he's throwing it in traffic and he has the zip to get it in there. So I thought I saw some aggression in the short intermediate game of him, you know, making some throws he probably wouldn't have made last year if I would have passed up for for the easier, shorter, you know, low uh, outcome check down. But I haven't seen the, the, the deep balls quite as much from him. But he he attributes that to the, to the defensive play calls. It's hard for me to tell. But it's something I will watch for the rest of the preseason. I think tonight that's one thing that we should watch for. I want to see him. You know, I want to. You know, look. I mean, you don't. There's. You don't throw deep just to throw deep, right? I mean. Mm, yeah, coverage dictates it. Coverage dictates it all. But if it's there for him, 
I would like to see him take a couple shots down there, you know, to uh, oh, yeah. uh, uh, Saturday night there for sure. I mean, but, but but once again, you don't want you know, you don't if there's other if, if the play dictates you go somewhere else, you go where the safe safer spot is. But I mean, mm-hmm. if you get the one on one coverage or whatnot, I, I would like to see that aggression that way. And Mike Thomas says, I, uh, when he was asked if he had seen Mason Rudolph's aggression, I have, and I know that his, uh, that, that is his intentions. I think one of the things that really attracted us to him out of Stillwater, Oklahoma was that level of aggression. Uh, the way, the way, uh, they, no, what does it say? The, the way they, they got this quote wrong here. The way that he attracted defense. Oh, it's, it's supposed to be the way he attacked defense vertically and through the ball i know that that's his style that's his demeanor and it's showing more and more consistently sorry about that messed up quote there but uh uh that was thomas response when it comes to that so yeah look who was who who uh, other than ben who has the strongest arm in camp uh i will i'm not sure how i'd rank it dobbs and hodges i think have stronger arms than rudolph i think rudolph's accuracy and placement on the deep ball might be better than both of those guys so they both have positive and negatives when they do go deep yeah i think the chiefs the chiefs run a ton of man defense so you know and it's preseason they'll probably go with their just a vanilla cover one stuff and that should create some options to throw deep so hopefully rudolph gets a chance to, to do that all right what else are we looking for we're looking for uh, mike tomlin told us about uh how how could see other guys playing in different uh different you know, levels of competition, different uh, uh, kind of you know, strings, you know, uh, first string, second string, that kind of thing this week as opposed to last week. We would expect a guy maybe like uh, Ulysses Gilbert to get some, some, I guess you'd say, more quality snaps against better competition this week. We already expect, heck, Tuzar Skipper might be a starter. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, uh, if, if Bud Dupree doesn't play, I mean – uh, he, he very well could say if Watt and Dupree sit, I mean, it's going to be Chicklo and, and, and Skipper, right? Yeah. Oh, I think one of them will play. So Skipper should be second team left outside linebacker, but he'll all play right. a lot. Yeah. Big, big chance for him. All right. Uh, who else uh, going to get uh, some work with, with, with the better teams this week? Maybe, maybe a Benny Snell. Um, no, well, I think Snell will still be the second guy. And I think it'll be pretty similar to last week. I mean, I'm looking at, uh, like you said, Gilbert, Johnny Holton, hopefully Johnny Holton gets some more play time. Uh, with some some higher groups we'll, we'll see exactly how it goes uh Duran gray should be running second team get a lot more play time isaiah bugs might get a little bit more snap count a little bit of a longer look so yeah a lot to a lot to look for with some of these these rookies that uh showed well in week one all right uh who who are you most looking forward to uh, mm. uh two players on each side of the ball uh saturday night against the chiefs Oh, man, I don't even know where to start. I, I really am excited to look at Duran Gray just to kind of get a real long look at him. I mean, I don't I'm not expecting him to make the 53 at this point with the way the competition is. But I just want to see I just want to get a really good look at him and six snaps against the Bucks really isn't going to offer that opportunity. So so I'll put Gray in there just to be a little different. And then I guess I got to go with Mason Rudolph just because, I mean, you know, this battle is still ongoing. And I, I think Rudolph has a, a slight edge right now. Um, it's still anyone's game. If Rudolph struggles and Dobbs has a great game, we're talking about, you know, the, the inverse of this, that Dobbs is now going to be in control. So that just tells me that this battle's still up in the air. So Rudolph just kind of how he starts to, to maybe get some chances to throw deep more. Um, I'm interested to check that out defensively. Um, I, I guess Sutton Smith, just because I don't know a whole lot about him because his camp was pretty quiet and obviously he missed a lot of time, uh, with injury. And then at safety, I don't know. I'm trying to think of maybe a, a, someone in the secondary cause that secondary was in such a rough spot, uh, last Cam, week. You got to go with Cam and Kelly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd probably be, probably be Cam Kelly, but you know, can Marcus Island stay at a case? I think he's maybe feeling the pressure right now. We'll see if he, he has that fight or flight kind of moment. So both of those guys, uh, I'll be watching. I will I will go Rudolph and Holton because Holton I think has the best chance of uh, kicking off either Switzer or, or, or Rogers from the mm-hmm. roster. I I really think at this point because of uh, look uh, Deontay Spencer may, maybe I was a little bit too hard on what he did the other night, but I mean I just uh, because of the position that he plays and, and we said all along with him if he does not grab that the return job it's going to be it's going to be uber tough for him mm-hmm. uh to, to he's, make he's been he's faded so i mean he's got a little bit right. of a Juan patterson fade feel he gets they still had a decent game he can still bounce back but 
much better start than how he finished camp. But but I think I think a guy like Holton, especially when you frame that around what Mike Tomlin said this past week about he's got NFL caliber tape already, you know, in the can, so to speak, mm-hmm. paraphrasing there, obviously. Uh, Money in the bank. I love that. I love that quote from Tomlin. Money in the bank. It's just that's a classic Tomlinism. Uh, <clears throat> when it comes, I I think him, and I'm going to call it right now. Rudolph to Holt, Holton home run. Ooh, how how long? How big of a home run? Uh, uh well, double double explosive. Oh play. yeah, yeah, double double explosive in the air. Uh, right. uh, du- uh, uh, so forty forty air yards home run. All right, I like I'm, not, I'm not going to call for a touchdown, but I'm a, I'm going to call for a double explosive play. Uh, okay. uh, from 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 those two, I I really want to see Rudolph have a nice game, and I and I I think Colton uh, can build on, especially I mean we're all phases, you know I, I, we'll see. I think we'll see him as a kick returner as well too. Defensively, yeah, I mean Sutton Smith. How can I not go Sutton Smith, especially with uh, Ola expected to be sidelined now? Uh, we we've, we've seen a little bit of what Tuzar Skipper can do, so I want to see me some. Uh, I want to see what Sutton Smith can do more. Uh, I'm curious as the pass rusher, obviously, but I mean I want to I want to watch what he can do on special teams uh, as, as well and. Look, I'm still intrigued about uh, Ulysses Gilbert, so I'd like to see him get out there and get some good, some some higher quality snaps. And I would call that like a two A and a two B would be along with the Cameron Kelly uh, there. So I I, I want to see a little bit more out of him. So I, I think those are the guys. And how about the corners? I and mean, we didn't get to see any of the corners last week. Burns, I know Burns, you know, this might be kind of old hat to him, a preseason game, but still, you know, his first chance out there. Brian Allen trying to make a last second push, and then Justin Lane, how he responds after that that tough first game, and then Lane, the benefit for him. Uh, we talked about most of these guys playing up more, you know, competitive snaps, a like Gilbert, a Holden, a Bugs, whoever. But Lane might benefit because he can be playing back. He he's he's not going to start. He'll be playing as he should be, more second and third team against some more competition close to his level right now as opposed to starters like he did against Tampa Tampa Bay so I'm curious to see his bounce back from that week one and how he kind of takes what he learns from from the mistakes he made in, in Tampa and how he takes that uh, against Kansas City yeah unfortunately we're not gonna I, I don't think we're gonna see Gentry right so no, he's the, not. The, that, that'll be unfortunate I don't really think there's a lot to look at it tight end to focus on you know uh, with, with him out, with Christian Scotland Williamson supposedly probably going to be out as well too. So I, I I really don't think there's a lot to look at there at that position. Uh, you know, want to see uh, Chukwama core four about make a bounce back, uh, put, you know, represent himself a little bit better. Did you read much into Tomlin being asked about? You know, we got some young tackles that we want to look at. You know, is that is that basically? Face value. In other words, look, we're comfortable. You know, Matt Fodder's playing guard because he needs to work at guard because we're comfortable with what he does as tackle. Is that the way you kind of took it? And we just want to give some of these young tackles some work. Yeah, I just took it at face value. There's a lot of tackles they want to see. Banner, of course, or Hawkins. Uh, you know, I guess those are the big, the big names there. So let's just let's make sure they're working at tackle and and, and honing their craft because I think Fodder, like I said, is pretty locked into that right tackle spot and doesn't have to prove it there anymore. All right. Uh, I think that you know, obviously watching Boswell and, you know, the, the, the pressure situations with, with some of these kickers and all, but I, I think that's got everything there, right? Yeah, uh, that's everything. Again, just play clean, play smart, play with good technique, run to the football, finish each play, good ball awareness. All those details are still going to be critical for these guys second time out, especially as that, that grind of camp is over. There's that fatigue going on. You know, who can stay focused, who can cross that finish line, not only for this game, but the rest of the preseason. Uh, that's going to be a big difference as well. Okay, let's see. And, and how do you play hurt? Because everyone's got bumps and bruises. Even the guys that are healthy and have missed practice, I'm sure they're feeling it. So how do you play when you don't feel 100%? That's going to be a challenge for, for these young new players. Sure, Mike Thomas said, time's short. I mean, yep. you, you better work your way through it here. Mm-hmm, Absolutely. All right, I think actually we uh, we covered a lot of uh, the questions uh, last night as well too on a wrap up. Got a, you got anything else that we, we we had on the list that we said we wanted to cover today? Uh, nope, I think that is everything. All right, from Dennis Diaz, he writes in, uh, "Thank you all for the camp coverage. This year was was another improvement." 
Somehow you covered and described more info than ever. It makes us feel that we were there. Thanks again for all your efforts. Well, Alex, there you go. Uh, Thank you. Uh, not, not another compliment there from Denny there, and I agree, man. I You, you do a fantastic job of getting this stuff uh, translated and make us feel every night that 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 uh, that we're right along their side, side we are with you there Lenny and I'm not even gonna Lenny I'm not even gonna try to pronounce your last name uh, here uh, Bar Barkic Barkowski. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't. You should have stuck to your word. Uh, I can't. I can't help myself. David mm -hmm. Alex, I totally enjoy every podcast. Just wanted to drop a line. I don don donated the twenty-five dollars for the ad-free version of Steeler's Depot. I absolutely love it. It's totally awesome. Not paid to say this, but I advise everybody that looks at your site to do this. It's 100% worth it. You can stay focused on the great material that is on the site. Alex, I totally believe that this Hodges is going to make the team. He is somewhat of a Cinderella story. I believe they will trade Dobbs and keep Hodges. What's your take? Uh, Dave, I totally agree with you that Mason Rudolph should should be Ben's backup. As hard as it is for everyone to hear Hear out uh, that there that likes Dobbs. That's what he was drafted for. Lenny, thanks for the donation. Thanks for the and yeah. Listen, uh, be 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 like Lenny. Take Lenny's advice. He's obviously gotten the ad free version and and loves it for twenty five dollars for a calendar year. Uh, you can help us and you can help yourself by having an ad free version of the site. So go to steedersdepot.com for and click on the ad free button up upper right navigational bar. How about them questions, Alex? Yeah, no, I, I just uh, the ad free version. Uh, obviously, that's what we use, and I think it's spectacular. It helps with load times, helps with just layout. It looks really clean and crisp. So I really do encourage it if you're able to. No pressure to do so, but uh, I think you'll have a much better experience on Steelers Depot uh, if you go ad free. We'll see with Hodges. You know, I, I try to be as uh, positive about Hodges as I can be because he's clearly played a lot. He's clearly played well. His team's been impressed by him. But if the season, if you had to make the, the, the decision today, Dobbs still has that spot. Like Hodges still has. A long ways to go. Remember, Dobbs didn't win his spot till the finale last year. Hodges still has work to do. And, you know, could he have that, that dug game that, that shuts his whole conversation down? It's possible. You know, Hodges has to deal with that adversity. I guess that's one thing he hasn't had to outwardly deal with, um, having bad moments. You know, he's had his fair share of, you know, play that, that misfires or whatever, an interception or two, but, you know, hasn't had a, a terrible day that he's had to really bounce back from. So still a ways to go. Um, I don't want to get too crazy about it, but I do want to be receptive to the idea that, hey, Hodges is a guy that's impressed. Dobbs, you know, obviously got the rush spot last year when I didn't think he was going to, so I don't want to make that same mistake twice, and we'll see what the rest of the preseason holds. All right, sounds good. I think we've worked through all the questions. Anything else to uh, to wrap this thing up with? No, it's probably good to get out here because I have no idea where we're at time-wise on this podcast. So uh, probably around 90 minutes. I, I don't know. It's probably get, good to get out now. All right. Uh, in the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter at Steeters Depot. You can follow Alex on Twitter at Alex underscore Kazor. You can follow the show at Terrible Podcast. Email the show, theterriblepodcast at gmail.com. Once again, if you want to donate to the cause, uh, a, a couple of final pushes here for some donations, uh, you go to SteedersDepot.com, hit the donate button, upright navigational button. Are if you want to support our cause and what we do, uh, as we mentioned, the ad free version of the site, go to steedersdepot.com, hit the ad free button to sign up for that if you want to. Uh, Alex and I will get back on it. I don't know, should we do maybe a uh, you feel like doing a Sunday game recap po podcast again for these people? Uh, you, you, you tell us, the audience tell us. You want to hear a, a podcast? Let us know if we get a good response. Yeah, we'll do it. All right, let us know on either the Twitter machine or uh, email the terrible podcast at gmail.com if you would like a podcast on Sunday to recap the Saturday preseason game, or or maybe you can wait till Monday. Uh, look, give us some feedback on that. Obviously, pretty soon we'll be getting back to doing the three podcasts a week there, but uh, want to kind of hold off on that as long as possible, make sure we have plenty to talk about, uh, not, not, not duplicate and stuff. But in the meantime, thank you for listening to the terrible podcast with Dave. And Alex.